Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called On Their Merry Way, and it is a game where you're building roads in order to sneak weary travelers and merchants to go on them to where they are going to then have to pay you money. It could be a hidden damsel in distress trap, or maybe just a bushwhack trap where you're trying to get these greedy, evil characters to go on the paths that you want them to go to. Of course, everybody else is also attempting to try and lure these merchants onto your spaces as well, and you'll be playing hard from your hand onto the board that will represent tiles for placement to where these merry travelers are going to have to go throughout their little journey and where you're going to actually make them spend money. And if you can collect as much money as you possibly can at the end of the game, whoever has 25 points first is going to be the winner. The game plays from two to five players, takes about an hour to play the game, and it's for ages 11 and up. Let's go ahead and take a look at On Their Merry Way. So here are the contents for On Their Merry Way, and as you can see, every player is going to get a plethora of tokens, and these tokens will represent the different tiles you're going to be playing down. Everybody's going to get a certain amount of these little tiles here that we will be using, up to five, I believe, to start the game off with. And it's going to tell you a couple things about these tiles here. You got the ones that are going to give you gold at the bottom, how much gold you're going to be getting from the travelers, the type of trap it is, as well as um, what is going to be needed for the traveler in order to go there, and finally the cost, as well as an action ability. Everybody is going to use these cards by playing them onto the board. You've also got these guys here. You got three colors on this side of the map and then two colors on this side of the map as well as the merchant deck and should be playing these across the board here and these merchants are going to have different um, symbology as well as text lazy greedy merchant a lazy dimwit greedy merchant and a greedy wicked lazy merchant you'll also be getting these little tokens here that are going to be allowing you to uh, build different traps and whatnot throughout the game and as you do so the game is going to get bigger and bigger throughout the rounds you're gonna be gaining points and then manipulating the guys in order to to go to the locations you want them to go to to score points from them and gain money. And that is the basic idea. Let's go ahead and talk about how a turn begins and what you're going to be able to do on your turn. So a turn is going to begin by you simply getting four of each type of resource. There's plans, there's materials, and then you have these little meeple here, which are consist, consist of characters, I suppose. And you're also going to get five cards, and these are tile cards that you're going to be placing down on the board. Now you're going to be trying to suspiciously lure or merchants into your tiles, and they are going to range with a different uh, set of uh, types of cards. Here, there's a greedy, dim-witted, wicked merchant, and they're going to hit traps. And they're going to start with hitting a greedy trap, then hitting a dim-wit, and then hitting a wicked trap. If they can't hit the first one, then they're not going to hit anything. So they have to hit them in this order specifically, which I'll explain on the board below. Also, you could run into guards, and guards are going to remove tokens off of cards, and the tokens are going to consist of your color to signify the trap is yours and whenever characters are going to hit those traps either if it's a guard it'll remove your token or if it's a character that hits the trap based on what the card says you're going to be getting money you want as much money as you can and throughout every round you're going to get 10 new types of material that you select as well as drawing two cards and selecting one of them to use as a trap so you're going to start off with five and continuously get at least one per turn although you can use currency to buy resources as well as to buy cards if you so choose but it's going to make you lose currency and that's going to be a negative value because you need 25 to win. After everybody's placed all they can place, because they have a couple different actions, they can place a trap, they can upgrade an existing trap that doesn't have a token on it or their own, and they can move a roadblock or they could choose to pass. If they pass, they're done, and everybody has once everybody has passed, the game will then conclude the round and you will move on moving the merchants across and starting another turn. And at, basically at some point, somebody's going to get 25 coins and that will declare that they are the winner of the game. Let's go ahead and show you how the traps work and how the characters move and maybe turn or two of play. Okay, so we're back to the board now, and as you can see, every player has four of each resource. They also have their tokens for their color, and these don't mean anything other than that you, when you place them on a tile, that that tile will signify as being yours. However, you can lose them depending on the tile or whether or not a guard winds up going on the specific tile. Uh, on your turn, you're going to have the first player marker, which is this guy here. We'll go ahead and move this player to the side a little bit, and you're going to be playing down these tiles. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of them. So this one right here we have is an orphan pickpocket. If no one travels on this for profit on a trap on a turn, you're going to lose uh, its trap token, which is one of these guys here. Because it's very cheap, but it's also very beneficial, because whenever somebody goes through this, you're going to score. Now, there's two different types of scoring, right? You're going to have coins, and then you're going to have these 
bags. The bag means that whenever any of the merchants hits this track or this tile, you're going to score one coin. This means whenever this thing lures a merchant on, it's going to score them one singular coin. However, if they go through it and they're not lured by the type, which is greedy, then they're not going to score a coin. Um, and they're, they differ in value, right? Of course, at the bottom here is going to tell you it costs two plans, one meeple, and two resources. And this is one, one, and one. And of course, there's a couple different things here. These are greedy traps right here. Here's a dimwit trap. And there's going to be lazy as well as wicked. And so this player is going to get to decide which one of these traps he wants to use and which side of the board he wants to use them on. You can select this side of the board or this side. When you place down your traps, you can you have to put them down where the little trees are so that players can move. If we can see here, this is the red player, the red merchant. This is the white or yellow one. This is the green, the blue, and the purple. And after everybody has passed their turn, these guys are going to go across the board. These guys will be going this way and these guys will be going this way and they're only going to move off the board when they land on a trap so as you can see this red guy is going to land on a lazy and then a greedy trap if possible so this player has a greedy and he has a dimwit he's going to look is there any dimwits there is this purple one which means he's over here so he's going to go ahead and play this dimwit card right over here and that's two coins whenever a dimwit hits a spot it's going to cost him two plans it's going to cost him three meeples and it's going to cost him two resources that is one of his actions on his turn he can do is simply placing a trap and paying for it after he's done with that he's going to end his turn and the next player is going to get to go and he'll look at his stuff he's got a lazy greedy two greedies two lazies and a dimwit and he's got a red guy here which is lazy so maybe he'll go ahead and choose that and let's see this one says he'll get plus one gold but it's not on the main path and i'll explain how that works in a second and this is a greedy one he doesn't need that i think he'll go with a lazy this one says pay one manpower each travel phase to keep this on so he'll go ahead and play this right here it's going to cost him uh one of the plan and one resource and, also, and also remember when you replace these things down you're going to be putting down a token on them just to signify that they're yours and you have two different sides you have the type of token and you have just like kind of like an interesting little uh little piece of artwork but if you want to you can actually go ahead and place the existing type token on there just so you can remember what it is that it does and who it brings after that the next players are going to just go ahead and go maybe he'll place something right here that's a lazy trap and that'll cost him two two and three but it's more expensive that's because whenever somebody hits this trap it's going to give them more more money will give them two money and finally this player is going to go ahead and go as well let's see what he wants to do he'll place a greedy trap right here and that'll be two one and two to the pool over here and players are going to keep doing that putting down different traps and then paying their value one and one and one as well as putting down their tokens on here. If no travelers give profit this trap on a player's turn, you have to remove the trap token, so that's why it's cheaper. And then this player now has an option because these actually are connected. He could choose to place a trap right here if he would like to. Let's go ahead and see if he can find one to play. He'll play this one right here, I think. It's going to cost him one plan, two meeples, and then three pieces of wood. So he'll pay that. And it says as long as it's on the main path, which this is the main path, it's going to give him one, plus one bonus whenever somebody goes here, um, is lured here by the lazy trap. So he'll go ahead and place this token over here. And eventually people are going to pass. So maybe he'll pass, he'll pass, he'll pass, he'll pass. The round will then be over. And then the first player, which is they got the first player token, is going to select one of these guys to move across. Now this is guard Douglas. So Douglas, if he wants, he can actually make this player go uh, across the board to destroy certain areas. So he'll actually choose Douglas because he's green and this is not that's not going to benefit him if this guy gets points. So he'll make the green guy go across. And the green guy is going to be looking for lazy. So he'll go across and he'll hit this one and remove remove this token which means that people aren't going to be getting money from this anymore and this one is also lazy so this will get removed and then this one also would get removed because it's also lazy and it'll come back he's always going to go the closest distance and always going to travel left if it's a tie so if there is one here and one here uh, and they're both one away if this is the one that's closest he's going to go this way if they're both tied if they both are lazy but then he would come back here right and so he was just going to be going around the map based on whatever it is that triggers him, such as this one being the lazy key. Now, if he actually didn't choose to do that for one reason or another, he just left these guys here, maybe he played something else, he chose this guy. This guy says he's lazy and he's greedy. So he would hit this lazy trap 
And it says pay one manpower to keep this alive during this phase. So the yellow would have to do that, spend one of these guys. And this guy was going to pay out one gold to the yellow player. So the yellow player is going to get one gold. And then now after he's hit lazy, he's going to go for greedy. Is there any greedy? No, there's two more lazies and this is a nothing. So he's just going to go across the board and end. The next player, this yellow player, is then going to get to decide. And he will pick the yellow space as well. And it'll hit lazy, giving him one more gold. That's pretty nice. And then now he's going to look for dimwit. Is there a dimwit? Nope. So it's going to go across the board. Finally, the, or next, next you're going to have this gray guy over here. And uh, gray actually has this one right here, I believe. And so he's looking for greedy on this side. He does have that one. That's a blue one. So blue one will look for greedy. It'll go here. It'll give him a piece of gold and it'll move across. Finally, the last player is purple and purple is going to go ahead and select. Uh, let's see if it makes a difference here. No, he purple select this to make him remove all of these pieces and wander off, wander off the board. So he, all these pieces will get lost and won't be able to be used anymore. And uh, finally, this piece will go across from the next player. And if it hits something which just says dimwit, oh, it would. So it hit dimwit and give two points to green. And then it would come back looking for lazy, but it doesn't find it because this is greedy and it'll go to the end of the board. Finally, after all the guys have gone across, these guys are all going to get removed and everybody is going to get a resource um, of up to 10 resources of their choice over here. And when they get 10 resources of their choice, they also, before that, they're going to draw two cards, select one of them from their hand. So if this, this green player is going to look at all these cards, draw two, look at all of them and discard one. And everyone else will do that as well. Just so that way he can, they can get the best resources, the, the best traps they can for the next upcoming units. And before they buy, uh, before they pick any of their traps, these guys are also going to refresh as well. So draw two, refresh the board, 10 of any type of units, and then continue. The most unique thing too is uh, when these guys go back to their starting positions, which is going to be over here before the round begins, you're going to then start going around in turn order once again and building more. And these boards can get pretty massive and they're always going to trigger off of their first, second, and then third keywords. And if there's never any second keyword, the third one is going to be ignored on the playing field. But if this guy was, I don't know, lazy, lazy, and then a dimwit, he would go lazy, lazy, and then he wouldn't go there, he'd just go out. So that's kind of the idea of the game. You're just scoring points. And you're gonna continue until the game ends. If somebody's gonna hit 25 points and win, after every round, this little token's gonna to move to this player and it'll start going clockwise with this player all the way around the board. And that is the basic idea for On Their Merry Way, how to play the game. So now a couple caveats. One of the things you can do on your turn is playing this little piece of rubble. And it's gonna block an entrance. So if you want, you can spend one of every resource to block an entrance. And you'll then have to take a bonus action, which is either to upgrade a tile, play a tile, or pass. Now, if you do this and another player wants to do this on their turn as a bonus action, it's going to cost one more of every resource per time this has been moved on a round. So the first time it's 1-1-1, one, 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 second time it's 2-2-2, two, 3-3-3, two, two, three, 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 so on and so forth. It'll start getting costly to move this little guy. Upgrading is interesting because as you saw, tokens are going to get removed from the board, whether it's by guards or whether it's by the merchants not going onto the specific tiles. And when that happens on the next round of play, if you have the ability to purchase something, you can go ahead and play a tile on, on top of another tile. And when you do that, it's going to cost one less of each resource, provided it's being played on a tile that was already there previously. So upgrading can be very beneficial. You also put your token on that tile, just like you would normally on any other one. The last little thing to mention is when this deck runs out of different merchants and whatnot, and then the game will be over, provided the last card has been placed. And 25 points, you're the winner of the game. That's the basic idea. Now, let me tell you what I think about it. So On Your Merry Way is basically kind of a tower defense. It has this feeling of the characters moving across the board and you have to lure them to score points. And it works very well. It feels like a Robin Hood kind of game where you're luring the evil greedy merchants into the forest and taking their money and giving it to the poor. And when you're doing this, you're also messing around with your opponents who are trying to do the same thing. Because if you have a greedy and they have a greedy but theirs is in front, you might want to put an obstacle there. So that way that the merchants pass theirs up and go on to yours. And the way the pathing works pretty simple. Always going to the left if it's a tie. As well as you're always trying to trigger the closest keywords. Once you hit one keyword, you're going to move to the next one. It flows very well. It works very well. And it's very simplistic. One side's going to have two guys. One side's going to have three. So you're going to have to try and put all of you can't put all your ducks in one area right it's not going to be very beneficial and you're going to score less points but the game always feels very very close one negative i could probably say is i think you could use some like action cards maybe a way to like move the tiles around or 
flip somebody's switch people's tokens or something like that i feel like that would kind of give it a more of a boost but as it stands it's very fun we had a lot of fun and it is very engaging and it's very competitive there is a lot of take that in this game as far as putting down spots in which you can kind of mess with your opponent's original idea like oh this guy's gonna go here here and here and that's gonna be perfect for me and then suddenly your opponent plays a piece that completely changes the way the character is going to move and lastly making you lose all the points you would have gained on that round and then you go okay well i have to now put a piece of rubble there to block that or i had to change a keyword over here to make him go where i want him to so it's kind of manipulating the characters and the characters are always changing so even if one round you're not doing very well with your position the next round can completely change that aspect to the point where you're going to be scoring a bunch of points there's cards that are worth more and you're always gonna get 10 resources but maybe you only want to play one card in a turn because it's worth so much and you're guaranteed to get a certain amount of points. You're going to have to try and manipulate everything as best as possible. And manipulation works very well. This is a very fine-tuned game, a well-oiled machine. And very enjoyable, in fact. If you, if you don't mind the very, very competitive aspect of it and the fact that you can be very mean to people by taking the money that they normally would have made, this is definitely going to be a game for you. The art's great. It feels very fun, very fresh and flavorful, and it's very vibrant in nature. So definitely do check out On Their Merry Way. I give it my stamp of approval, and it's definitely staying in my collection. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps, as well as checking out On Their Merry Way. In the description below, you can go and check out the Kickstarter campaign. Also, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and check out my website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts and giveaways, as well as our big Kickstarter list that shows you all the Kickstarter games currently coming out, which you can choose to back if you like, just like this one. As well as checking out my friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, you guys have a good one, and I look forward to seeing you next time.